All right, back at it again on 8020 here with someone that I connected with, I believe, in 2020. Um, actually got hit up uh to to do a um a PDF for this guy that's sitting across from me on uh, on Zoom and a PDF that I'm not sure has been used until recently, almost two years later. Um, hey, yep. <laughs> but Sam, I appreciate you being here, man. And uh, I really, I really do appreciate you making time for this. Uh, if you would, I, I'd love for you to give a little bit of background of, of kind of who you are, what you stand for and that kind of thing before we dive into some, some specificity on some training topics. Cool, man. Uh, well, uh, Sam Okunola. I almost want to say Sam OK Fit just because I, that's how I introduced myself <laughs> yeah. on my YouTube. <laughs> but Sam, Sam Okunola. Um, I am uh, uh, dad first, family guy, uh, fitness second. Uh, I like to put it in that order. Uh, fitness enthusiast. Uh, I love everything about fitness. I love everything about challenging myself. Um, I am a uh, physic online fitness coach. Um uh, I am uh, lead, one of the elite physique coaches on RP Strength, uh, and I also do some lifestyle coaching, too, uh, on my personal website. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, somebody who loves fitness, loves challenging themselves. Uh, I try not to use a lot of qualifiers for myself. I'm, uh, I used to bodybuild, I guess. I still bodybuild, I guess. Uh, I kind of <laughs> run now, I guess. You know, I, I, I do multitude <laughs> of things. I don't want to. I don't want to put myself in a box. So, uh, but yeah, all of, all I mean, all around, just you know, fitness enthusiast and to my that uh, you know, I'm on a quest to you know challenge myself and you know and not be mediocre. So, but yeah, that's a short snip of uh, who I am in a nutshell. Yeah, uh, I would also say you need to add humble on there because um, the whole time that I've I've followed you and I've spoken to you, uh, you, you definitely got confidence, but also at the same time you 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 couple that with well, you know, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just doing what I'm doing, and uh, I think that that's pretty rare in this in this world, man. A lot of people think that their shit don't stink. A lot oh, of people, you yeah. know. Not definitely not me because I I mean I, I like my I like to clear out there um, a lot of times that uh, I am a re- as regular as they come. You know, I think, again, I we live in a world where a lot of people tend to see people like maybe like me uh, or other people that are on different platforms. Like, man, that guy is just X, Y, and Z because it's just X, Y, and Z. So almost like a qualifier for why you're not doing what they're doing because those guys are on, uh, you know, upper echelon or whatever. And uh, one thing I try to say on my YouTube channel, like, no, I'm not going to give you an out. <laughs> like, nope. I am you. Like I don't have any special. I work the same. I mean, I work a job like you do too. I'm not a full time fit, uh, fitspo. You know, <laughs> uh, I actually work a corporate job. I have a family like you do. I just decide. You know, I want to. I want more out of life. So that's literally the difference a lot of times. But no. Uh, but no. I mean, that's that's yeah. That's in a nutshell, really. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, let, let's uh, let's go back to to you want more out of life. Where did this all start for you on the fitness side? Because I don't think you came out of the womb as uh, as jacked up as you are right now, right? Uh, some will argue uh, that's the case. <laughs> uh, again, uh, for that, uh, <laughs> oh no, it was genetically gifted. Uh, but no, where it started, um, a ba- high school background, uh, played soccer. I mean, that's my number one sport, still my number one sport, although I don't play um, as much as I used to. And uh, I used to play uh, back in the day, um, and as a matter of fact, I played uh, two weeks ago, and now I'm like, yeah, no, uh, not the same. I think I rolled a couple of ankles, and like, oh, maybe not, you know, I just, you know, put my cleats away. <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, you know, sports background. I played soccer all through high school. Um, I played a little bit in the military, and uh, besides that, uh, overall, it was just you know something I naturally just got into and uh joined the military um uh, i was in the army for six years and when i got out and the last thing i wanted to do was just i did not want to run i just now i mean i took my shoes you know throw that thing away and i'm like never to be seen again and uh luckily for me the people that i'm uh, around would just happen to be in the bodybuilding space and just by watching the likes of ryan Doris's out there and that's how i kind of got into my sort of fitness space and uh, or bodybuilding, so to speak, and uh, yeah, so I've been bodybuilding since 2006, and kind of just you know, um, the challenge of you know bodybuilding, I, I caught the bug, as I say, you know, like my coaching um, experience too. Like, and anytime I tell a, a kind of first timer that's competing 
or competed for the first time, or somebody's asking me DMs, hey, do you think I should compete? And I typically will suggest, like, say, yeah, sure, go for it. Because uh, luckily, I mean, if you're lucky enough to find the right coach or the good coach to guide you through the process, it's either you go through the process or maybe like in halfway through, like, man, this is not for me, this is just way too hard. Or you're like, man, this is really, really cool. Like, I can, man, I cannot wait. I should just get some time, work on improvement season, actually attack it again because I like, you know, what I'm getting out of this. So I caught the bug and uh, never looked back since. I've been competing. I uh, did my first show in 2006. And, um, yeah, I've been doing that ever since. Yeah, when you when you're playing high school soccer and then some soccer in in the army i mean were you also still lifting weights at that point or had you had you gone heavy like even powerlifting or anything like that or not so much uh when i was in the army i mean obviously you run a lot that's the, the number one uh you run a lot you do a typical like you know uh combative uh it's martial arts combatives if you, anybody that's in the military that's listening you understand what combatives is you have different levels you have a certain type, uh, type of day think about your Jiu-Jitsu class, you know, that's what in you know, a mixed martial art um, tip, um, is. You have different levels. That's like you do that, you do your running, but it's mainly that. And lifting weight typically is something you do recreationally, all right, you know, uh, later in the day kind of thing. And I will say I, I mean, I'm not very versed in, you know, in the, um, in the in the lifting space, and I'm you know I was that guy that ripped out a couple of workouts in the magazine. It's like okay, this is what I'm going to do today, and you know next week is going to be and tomorrow's going to be something else. Um, but no, I mean trained. I would call my I was a recreational lifter, or I worked I, I worked out. I didn't train, so I think that's that's a difference uh, that, will, that will, I check the box. Let's just call it that way because my main focus at the time was just not really focused on trying to get strong. It was just checking a box so pulling up to the gym and getting some exercise in is that what i'm hearing yep so yep. For, precisely and, <laughs> for those uh, for for those out there that don't know uh can you break down real quick the difference between training and exercising because i think a lot of people miss this yeah so um it's funny you bring that you bring uh you bring that question because I, I made a post on uh, instagram yesterday talking about um uh it's like a the real was a voice of robert williams talking about uh you know, not know what to do tomorrow, but but it's exciting, and uh, and that's the so a regular lifter will be like, okay, you're just doing it because to check a box. I love the way it kind of makes you feel. You get like you know quick you know dopamine endorphin release, and like you know you get in like, ooh, I feel good. You know, it's like I got a good sweat in. There is no typical structure on it. You go on an app like, huh, what do I want to feel like I want to do today? So it's just checking a box just to feel good, a way to. You know, you don't really care. You don't have a body composition no goal necessarily. You don't have a physique goal necessarily. And then you have the training aspect where, okay, you are on actual structure program. Uh, I mean, there are people out there that think they're training, and but they're not on structure program. They're just kind of just winging it. So if you're listening and you find yourself in that category, no, you just exercise and you're not <laughs> training. Uh, because, again, training has to be structured in a way. You have to be have a specific goal that you're trying to work towards. Uh, so training essentially is, okay, uh, you okay, you have a big macro cycle, for instance, okay? Uh, six months can be a macro cycle. And within that macro cycle, you have your best cycle, which can be like small little chunks of training set. And everything kind of just shifted and, you know, laid out towards a bigger goal bigger legs bigger back uh i mean proof strength or you know whatever it is uh crossfit or you know imp i mean uh improve your you know um uh, output or whatever it is you have a training that's structured towards a specific goal and instead of exercising when you're just showing up and just like oh, i'm just gonna check a box today i feel good i'm gonna go home and you know i'll see how i feel tomorrow and whatever it's up there i'm gonna you know check that box again so that's the main difference between the two yeah. What, I mean, what do you think the percentage is of people that are, that are in your commercial gyms, even your boxes, even doing open gym at home gyms, hotel gyms that are exercising versus training? Oh, I, will, I mean, I've not seen any data, but if I had to guess, I mean, uh, if I had to go in the gym right now, I just ask at least maybe like four people, they probably don't have any sort of form of tracking how they lift. You know, I know I'll make a lot of fun. I'll make fun of all people that you see, like, you know, with notepads, like writing stuff mm -hmm. down. I mean, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, I obviously, because technology, I have things on my phone. I have my Excel, you know, sheet or all the other types of, uh, tr uh, you know, tracking system that you have out mm -hmm. there to track your volume. Um, but to your point, uh, if I had to guess, I mean, I, was, I mean, at least 80%. Uh, again, given give the demographic of people, the kind, depending on what kind of gym you, you go into, if you go to a powerlifting gym, of course, most likely, you know, 
they are on some sort of programming. You know, you have your RPE, you have your back offset. They are on that because that's mm-hmm. that type of gym. But a typical commercial gym, I mean, I would say probably around 80% at least will have like, you know, I mean, two out of 10 people will have some sort of structure program they are working towards. Sheesh. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going guess... And again, I'm not, I'm not dogging like, you know, the exercise part again, yeah. because yeah, our yeah. goals are different. Not everybody Absolutely. wants to like, you know, get jacked. Just, I mean, at least, I mean, again, there are just... The fact you make it to the gym and you like doing some sort of fitness again, I mean, good job. You're doing that. Your goal is just different. You just want to feel good. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's, that's how some people start. And, you know, then eventually I want to get, you know, I want to be a little more serious about this. Yeah. So how do I get to that next level? And that next level for you is just, okay, now I need a structured training programming. So, yeah. Well, dude, I like that uh, you're a legitimate athlete that does not have judgment for people doing that, but you're willing to take a stand that, hey, they're different, right? Training and, and exercising, they're different. And if you have a goal, you need to be training, not exercising. If you're just doing it for mental health, you're just doing it because you want to to have a release, you want to hit the dopamine that wants to happen, then okay. I mean, you could probably get better yeah. results. So even for just that benefit, if you were on training, right? Like you would say yeah, so? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I think the reason why, like, I mean, again, the post literally was like, like, I mean, 24 hours ago. Mm-hmm. And I think, again, I was I was typing that post out. And I, yeah, I, do, I mean, I think enough people already feel some sort of like alienation when you go to the gym, like almost like an elitist mentality. Like, I don't want to go to the gym because I don't want somebody to be looking at me like I'm doing something wrong, mm-hmm. which people do. But again, I mean, my platform, what I try to do is, yes, I'll say most of my content is probably geared towards maybe not necessarily like the beginner. I would say more of the intermediate, maybe to advanced level at times. But I'm trying to scale that content back a little more of the beginner side too because i don't want just want to leave them because uh, behind you know the sideways because when i get i want to I, I hate to use the word dummy down but i just want to you know make it a uh, relatable more relatable to a different sector yeah. of people that want to you know go, uh, go to the gym so uh they already feel that alienation to begin with so i just want to make sure hey the fact that you got off the couch you go to the gym that's a good thing if you're just checking a box more power to you the, because your other alternative could have just been, uh, no, make an excuse or not do anything and just be content with whatever it is. Because I know the impact of what fitness, you know, is to a lot of people. And the fact that you're getting up, you're getting, you know, you're checking that box, good for you, you know. Yeah. And if you want to get to that more of a serious level because you feel like, okay, I've stalled out, you know, there's more that I can never get get out of this experience, it put more power to you. So, yeah, I, w- I would say a lot of your content is is moving to the place where it could kind of be in the middle of advanced athletes to, to newer people, except for what you shared or you reshared from Squat You today. Like, I don't know <laughs> anyone that's brand new that's be- that's going to do some offset carries with a band attached. You know what I, I mean? I mean, it, it, exactly. So I think uh, so the um, and I think if you if you look at the uh, I mean, two different posts, right? Yeah, you know, two different posts. Uh, again, um, anything that you do fitness related. Uh, so. Again, the intimidation factor, right? This is why in the gym, just like pick a squat in or doing some sort of impressive number. I think people would get see that they get intimidated, and uh, it takes a trained eye to know. Of course, you can scale that down. Like every movement that you see that looks looks complicated can be scaled down. Like you have levels, right? Level one, level two. Uh, our advanced, so technically, you can make this movement, or maybe have a, from a beginner standpoint. It's almost like doing like a like a functional movement test for somebody. It's when they cannot squat properly because they have a lot of limitations. You're not going to just put them under a rack. You're going to start them from you know baseline. So, but to the point of the kettlebell frame, I mean, normal farmers carry. It's everybody can do that. Like you can carry mm-hmm. something. Just walk. No, 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 people can do that. But I think it gets to a point where okay. That's the easy level, right? You can make it a little more challenging in advance by adding a band to it because that want to tug you a little bit more and it, you know, also appropriate proprioception to want mm-hmm. to make sure you engage you engage your core. But to your point, like, yes, I mean, I mean, a new beam and I just, you know, I mean, it's the same way you're not going to go to the gym and just like, you know, at the gym seven days a week and, you know, I mean, start you know, running 16 sets on every body part. And you're not going to do that because you're not going to be able to maintain that at all. Everything, everybody's got to start somewhere. And if you start from how much carry and it's good for you, great. There was another level you can definitely add to challenge yourself uh, on just outside of the room, just a simple suitcase carry, I should say. Yeah, no, and, and I definitely agree there. So I guess like for my, most of what I, what I'm doing these days is, you know, either it's either manageable weight loss or extreme fat loss. You know, we're, we're taking people from like mid twos, mid threes that have no business being there down to up under twos. Uh, And my recommendation is always movement daily. 
but really only mm-hmm. need people working out three times a week. I mean, do you, are you on that same side? Do you differ? Do you have a different protocol that you run, run people through there? No, no, absolutely. Again, I think we were talking before we got, we before we started recording on the, um, the video that was dropping to, uh, today. Uh, so the way this video was structured really is covering, you know, the topic that we yeah. talked about, then jumping into actually my, uh, my training program. Before I jump into my training program, I actually give like a general like overview of how you can structure your training program. If you're a beginner, mm-hmm. really you, do, you only need maybe three set, three to four sessions a week, some sort of like a full body split. Mm-hmm. That's all you really need. Like you can manage, you can recover from. And then if you fall into yourself like an immediate, an immediate level, then you can get into like the four to five, you know, times per week, maybe do some sort of like, you know, a bro split you know, or upper lower, upper lower and one day cater to like a, a weak body part, so to speak. And then you get into like more advanced level, like the that goes like, you know, the six, you know, uh, six days a week, uh, you know, people that do two a day sometimes, you know, uh, then, you know, you can be a little bit more creative in that aspect. But if you're new to the gym, really, I think, again, I think our brain is shaped in a way that we naturally just see things on a macro that we want to do a lot initially, right? But, you know, but if only but if you do understand, you and I know, so I understand or somebody that's done the extreme side of things initially and all of a sudden they skill, but like, well, there's no way I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I can maintain that and you scale back to a more uh, manageable level, uh, you realize you don't need all that. You need yeah. three days a week for you to, I mean, I mean, effectively, I mean, my train, my, you know, coaching mindset is like the same way when uh, a client comes up to me and it's okay, oh, what's your, what are your numbers in the gym like? And they say, oh yeah, I can squat X amount of weight. I can like press X amount of weight. Cool. I'm like send me a video and they send a video. I'm like, yeah, you know, we can make a few tweaks here, like slow that movement down a little bit, you know, some time on the tension, like, okay, just moving a bunch of junk sets. And you really tell you need to do 12 sets per week in like uh, manageable sets for them. Like, you know, it said as I wrecks them because they're actually doing it properly now. So I think a lot of people can actually do more with less than they think. You know, I mean, it's about quality work, right? You can you can do more with less, and it's not always about oh no, it's not it's not working. Let me just swap this out and you know throw throw something else in. Like no, like milk everything that you have out that small little thin first, and when you match that out, then you know, okay, can I add another day? You know, can I add you know maybe another set to this movement? Well, there's so much you can do with little, but again, the brain is designed to like, no, more, 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 like, no, more is not always more, you know, uh, less yeah. is actually more sometimes. So. No, I totally hear that. I'm, I'm a big proponent of a minimum effective dose. And also you can hide anything, right? You can hide anything with speed. Absolutely. You can hide a Absolutely. terrible squat snatch, a terrible front squat, a terrible body weight squat by moving faster. Yep. <laughs> Mechanics yep. can look trash and you not see it until you slow the heck down and film yourself. Yep. Oh my God. Not yes. always douchey to film yourself, right? <laughs> I I tell I'm like, I know you don't like it. I know you hate it. I give them clients that I have that I know on social media. I stalk their page just to watch, you know. I mean, even though like if you're posting stuff and you're posting it just, you know, not for views or life, mm-hmm. just post it, you document it yourself too, right? Mm-hmm. And I always encourage you to like, you know, I record my first set. And I record my last set because there are times when I, I mean, I've been training for years and I still get to the point where I'm sabotaging myself, mm-hmm. you know, but when I record it and I have to be honest with myself, I'm looking at it, I'm like, that moved a lot faster than I thought, you know, than, than, I, than, I, than it felt to me like, man, I, I mean, there are times where like, you know, I thought I didn't have more. This is mm-hmm. like an RP called Jesus, for instance. I mean, it's like my overreaching week and I'm like, okay, it's like empty, emptying a tank on pretty much every set, right? And it gets to that like, second to the last set. Mentally speaking, I'm already sandbagging because I'm like, oh, I got to leave one in the tank. I'm just going to go all out. No, but if you're training to like that true RP skill, it should be on every set, right? And there are times where okay, maybe I'm doing like a, a, a 10 or 12 rep range and I got like 11 on the second to the last set. And somehow, because I know I don't have any set left after the last set, I'm doing like 19. I'm like, how did you do 19 on the last one? And you stopped yourself on 11 and you feel like, <laughs> oh, you had nothing left. Oh, of course, I sandbag myself. Yeah. So I think taking a video of yourself, I know, I mean, it's like, okay, everybody you see in the gym now has got some sort of video or recording something, depending on what kind of gym you go to, right? But I think, again, I don't want, I mean, I, I record myself too, but mainly, obviously, the content that I post out there, but typically most of the content I record are things that I do to gym. Anyway, it's the arm I train instead. Unless I'm trying to, like, you know, do sort of instructional video or something like that, then I'll record it. But most of, like, training videos that I post are actual sets that I do, and they are typically, like, hard sets, just to keep myself honest. Yeah. And I mean, with all that recording on and off social media, how much hate do you get on it? On recording? Yeah. Like if you're, I I mean, 
I would assume at this point you're going to a gym that, that people in there are probably not bothered by you recording, but like how yeah. much hate are you getting for recording and on the promotion side? Like, is that something that you deal with on a, on a day in day out? I mean, you got like about 60 K people running around on Instagram. Um, not a lot of hate. Like typically it's most, most people like right what kind of camera phone and kind of camera do you use it? Are you using what kind of this and like, I, don't, I mean, it doesn't really matter what camera you're using. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, the content really that's that you can have the, yeah. you have the sickest camera in the world, but what are you, what are you, what's the point? What's the purpose behind it? Right. Um, but no, I don't, I mean, if anything, I think, yes, you know, the reels on IG, it, you know, everybody's like, you know, professional, uh, you know, videographer at this point. Right. <laughs> um, but I think we, we are we will listen with our eyes as they say right mm -hmm. uh you know if it's not visually appealing a lot of times you tend to quick you know quick to like you know kind of just mm -hmm. scale to the next one or whatever yeah. so and i love the creative aspect of just you know editing and things like that too so that's my I, I love that but as far as hate no i think again because the content is what people typically tune in and not yeah. like you know the hate and now people that have me in the gym that follow me it's like whoa oh you're that guy on you know whatever whatever i mean the platform they see me and it's like oh yeah that, that's fucking, that's awesome and i like, appreciate that man and again i think is that you know understand like the gym is a public place too i don't i make sure when i'm recording i'm very cognizant of when i'm recording i make sure there's nobody around me uh you know or i ask before i record like hey hope you don't mind this recording on if you do are in the background, don't worry. This lens is X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. It's gonna blur you out anyway. So you don't have to worry about, you know, if you want to your face to be seen in the picture. So I'm very aware because I'm I mean again, I understand it's a public space and we just want to work out and you know, mm -hmm. never be bothered or find you know, have the face be located. But I, I purposely I'm very aware of that and I understand the public space and people are like, Oh yeah, I'm just, I don't want to be like, no, 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 bro, please. I'm you know, you're trying to work out, I'm trying to record mm -hmm. here. So I hope I'm not bothering you. And people would live, I mean, I don't think I've had anybody that's like, bro, like, you know, very like competition or like any, and then again, I don't go to gyms that aren't like, I mean, recording friendly or don't record here. And so. Yeah. I mean, you're not walking into planet fitness and uh, no, <laughs> where you no. can't drop again, a weight either. If you, yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> right. And the, I think if, again, it's, it comes out, I mean, the concept of going to the gym, I mean, I, I love sharing content. I love to help people. I know it's very, you know, that's how, you know, people get a lot of their, you know, um, um, tips and advice or whatever nowadays. So, and I want to go to gyms that are, are going to be friendly to doing that. And if a gym is like, Oh yeah, we don't want that. Dude, that's your establishment. You don't want that. Cool. There's all the gyms out around that, you know, my, that would very openly like, nah, maybe we don't care, man. Like, you know, come over here. So it's, you know, it's not anything that's worth like, you know, you know, screaming and hollering about because it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> First world <Yeah>. problems. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally hear you there. Well, that's cool that you're, uh, you're in a spot that's, that's pretty open to it. Um, cause I don't know how you get some of these shots if people were pissed off that you were doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> blurred background right bokeh everywhere like you have yeah. to set up a camera yeah. that's clearly visible and, and uh, you have to explain to them like uh i promise i can show it to you you're not you're not in the background like you're not you, i mean you kind of you know it's a silhouette it's not you right so the shape of your body is there but you can't see yourself and, yeah you can't you see that. yourself <laughs> yep um well cool well, let's wind it back man you said you said you started kind of the bodybuilding side did your first show in 06 um can you uh, yeah can you walk me through, you know, that journey from really 06 to 2017 when you won? Um, so uh, not to like, you know, gloss over that. Um, again, I mean, the, I stumble on bodybuilding, really. Um, I, and I, I don't, I stumble on it because one, running was like my main, I was, I played soccer. I ran when I was in the military. I didn't want to run anymore because I just got tired. Again, military never, it's not. It's not meant for you to love running. It's like, oh, we got six miles. Half has been running. Boom, let's go. Whatever, whichever group you're running with, you have your A group, A group, B group, C. So the enjoyment, I feel, I'm think if you find like without find running now, they, they have some sort of military background. I guarantee you, they hated. They when they got out, like there was a, a, a space where just they hated running. By the way, I still hate running. I dislike <laughs> it. Um, I still constantly <laughs> why uh, all the time. I uh, still so don't want to roll out of bed. I just want to make that clear. Like, you know, I think a lot of see that running, like, oh, yeah, you must love it. No, no, no. I hate running. So let's make that clear. Lifting, on the other hand, I love it. I I mean, I, I don't have to force me to show up to the gym and live. I, I look forward to that. Uh, but to back to the point of, uh, so I got out of the military, uh, went to college, 
I was within the gym uh, one day, and one of one this guy showed up, jacked out of his mind, straight out of his straight out of his mind. Like, okay, that guy must play football or something. But that's what I thought. Uh, I'm like, hey, do you play ball? I mean, strong legs, you know. It's like, oh no, I bodybuild, son. Uh, that <laughs> son, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, we ended up becoming best friends. <laughs> uh it was uh it was a bromance at first sight that's one of my uh best friends uh ryan doris and uh so by default i kind of just started training with him and you know we started working out together i mean little that i mean at the time i didn't know we both had the same major business uh, major in college took the same classes so our schedule lined up well i mean it's literally that you know training partner that you know the the ideal training partner because it's been He's been in that space longer than I am. And it's actually has some notoriety too because he's done a few shows and people know who he is and uh, local gyms and things like that. Um, so anyways, it competed and I'm like, you know what? Um, I One of my camp, prior to that, uh, she rewind, rewind back a little bit. Prior to that, um, I before I met him, I did um, a show called Greek Physique. And uh, in uh, if you go on my YouTube channel, like all the way back in 2006, you see like some, you know, um, digitized um pixelated uh video of me uh do my uh posing routine which i still cringe at till today <laughs> we all start some we all start somewhere um uh so i mean the way the reason i got into that show is because one of my kmp teacher which is like a weightlifting class um was like hey i mean you're lucky if you ever read some physique there's a show that this fraternity puts together on campus it's for charity and things like that and i'm like huh? I'm like what, what do you mean by good it's like it, it's like no, like it's like no, like I'm not stepping on stage with like you know speedos and and flexing my shit. And it was like, no, I just think you know I think you really do good. At the time, yeah, I was just like, I needed something challenging. Like, well, I mean, you know, why not? So I had a guy that was a cop, was a is a campus guy, a police officer. But I began jacked. And of course, what do you do when you see Jack do, bro? Do you you have the answers? You the person I need without any sort of like on the side of the background at all. And it's only kind of got me ready. And I did the typical, you know, broccoli, chicken and fish uh, diet, you know, for oh, I think like eight weeks or so. Tupperware? <laughs> Tupperware, oh. you know, carrying my, oh. carrying my skip, carrying my Tupperware to class, you know, uh, you know, my, I mean, I'm not, you know, taking a shot. I mean, I'll be, if you listen to, they listen to this, you, you took care, you took care of your boy. I look good, <laughs> but <laughs> I know better now, but you know, it kind of, it got me through that process. And I won the show. I won the, uh, uh, it's called Greek Physique. I won the show. And I'm like, wow, this is actually pretty, this is fun. And yeah, I like that. But fast forward to meeting Doris like a year later, um, then met him and actually saw, that show was not sanctioned. By sanctioning, I mean, it's not under like some sort of federation or body uh, that would say, oh yeah, this is an organization. It's just a local college show, right? And um, saw him, he was competing for the show. So watching him get in the front row seat and watching him go through that process, was very intriguing to me and i'm like wow this is awesome this is something i would definitely love to do so it took a year and a half we did my typical off season training with him and you know i had him to kind of just guide me through the process of like the dieting down and things like that and i did my first show uh called the ocb midwest states and if anybody that's listening they'll understand what ocb midwest states is it's one of like the biggest like prestigious like shows you can definitely win as a national bodybuilder and that's where that guy that's where i got my pro card uh back in 2007 well back in, back in 2009 i believe that's something about pro card and um uh, yeah since then i'm like okay this is actually pretty fun like you telling me i can dedicate you know, X amount of time to improving my body and I can dedicate X amount of time to, you know, stripping off the fat. Like I can actually do that. I'm like, oh, I'm about it. I like that. And training, I think just again, the environment of where, you know, I was like, you know, it fused that love, like, you know, doing that because everybody around me, prior to social media, after Facebook was just becoming a thing, YouTube was still kind of just becoming it, I mean, uh, becoming it now where it is now. Uh, and it's just, it was a social hour, right? It was a hangout spot. We all, I mean, I was a college student. We get out to the rec center. We all work out, you know, we go out and grab food and eat. And it was just like, you know, to, to nobody was caring about, hang, I mean, angles and, you know, uh, what to post or this and that. Nobody cared about that. We just showed up to the gym, lifted, had a good time, go back to class, grab food, and that was it. And uh, uh, that's how I kind of got into like the body good in space. And, you know, I got a pro card, done multiple shows, uh, I won quite a bit. Show, I mean, at least at least twelve different shows. Um, 
uh, pro shows. Um, I've lost at least five, I lost four. Um, and I got, I won my, I won the world championships in 2017. And the last time I competed was actually this year at the NPC show, NPC, um, Midwest, um, here in St. Louis, just out of, you know, see how fat, I mean, how can I push myself with, uh, running and competing at the same time. So, and right now I consider myself kind of sort of retired. So until okay. the bug hits, until the bug hits again, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. The, um, the pro card with where you won in 2017, can mm-hmm. you talk to me? I, I have no idea what WNBF is. Can you, can you run me down what that is? Like compared to where people are like, Oh, there's IFBB, there's NPC, there's this, like, I have no idea. Gotcha. That breakdown. Gotcha. So, um, if you need to bodybuilding, you have, but yes, you do have a natural side. Uh, the only bodybuilding scene out there is not NPC or IFBB. So NPC is like the amateur side of the uh, IFBB, meaning if you want to compete, if you want to become a professional bodybuilder, you have to go to the NPC and come and get your pro card and whatever the criteria is, we're the top two overall, whatever it is, mm-hmm. that's what qualifies you to now compete at the IFBB. Um, then you have the natural side. Natural side meaning you show up to the show, you get polygraphed, uh, you get your analysis done. Um, you get and, polygraphed. Hold on. What? Yes. <laughs> you get polygraphed for you sit for down. Being natty? You, you, you get what? polygraphed. Dude. You sit down. They strive everything. They ask you questions. What's your name? Is your name Sam? Dude. Is your uh, do you live at X, Y, and Z? <laughs> uh, you use any steroids? Any banned substances? Like they like been moving and shit. Like yeah, you 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 get and you get. I mean, so again, I I mean. The WBF. So IN, uh, the INBA is the amateur side of the WBF. And then you have other uh, natural organizations, the IPE, the OCBs. That's another conversation that you can have, you know, about, hey, you can have one, you know, one division as far as, you know, amateur and you have one pro that might be a little bit easier compared to, I mean, like the NPC. But that's another conversation. But but the context of understanding the difference between both, you have the you know tested side and you have the not tested mm-hmm. side. Not tested side is the NPC where it's okay for you to use and sort of like you know you know performance enhancing drugs or and uh, the uh, um, natural side it's not allowed if you get like people do get you know people I mean get tested and people come back positive uh, quite a bit and if that happens if you get like a seven year ban you cannot compete uh, in a natural show. Uh, for seven years and uh but yeah that's to relatively the difference between that so uh 2017 i won the uh, uh war championships in 2017 and uh yeah that was a that was a good time wow okay so you won in 2017 and then you continue to compete but now natty you're competing with people that are not on the npc side <laughs> Yeah, so technically, I mean, actually, 2017 was my first time I did. I competed at a uh, no, 2019 was the first time I actually competed at an NPC show. Um, and the challenge really was one: I'm an actual guy. Why, you know, I want to compete against you know enhanced athletes just to see how I fare, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it was local to me, also, like literally. I mean, like local here, and uh, it's like why not? You know, it's a test show. Literally, I'm stepping out of my house. I'm driving 15 minutes down the road. I'm popping on stage. I'm back in my bed at night. Like, it's not, you know, and I'm already kind of within, like, you know, shape also, <laughs> a decent shape, which people that are close to me will beg to differ. If I, I look like crap, which I did. But anyways, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's, again, it's not tested to show up to the show. Uh, again, I won it overall uh, for that show. Um, and which qualified me for junior nationals. The junior national, again, NPC side is such, it's a stage. You just don't go to a show, win a show, and all of a sudden you become a pro. You win a you know local show, regional show, then you qualify you for like a junior nationals or nationals. Either junior nationals or nationals will give an opportunity to get a pro card. And I uh, competed um, in the junior nationals in Chicago. I got fourth place out of I think 12, 12 people in the class. Um, and that was like my first experience doing an NPC show, which I mean, it was fun. It was definitely, uh, like, you know, fun and challenging. Got that one had like at least 30 pounds of muscle over me. So <laughs> go figure. And, um, and, uh, but I think I held my own. I think I, you know, I think did pretty well for the first time. And at the last third show, uh, NPC show that I did was this year. Again, the same local show that's like, you know, pretty quick. Um, I mean, 15 minutes away from where I live. So, yeah. The, um, 
when you got fourth, was that one spot out of qualifying for for the pro card, or was that two? No, that was spots? that was two spot. I think the top two in each class, we would, they would give in pro cards too. Damn. That was two spots. And again, I mean, I was I would definitely say I was not chasing. Pro, it would have been cool, but I would definitely I was not chasing pro card. The reason I was not chasing pro card is, what if I get the pro card? Then what? What do I do with that? Uh, go to a pro show and get twenty out of twenty place because I'm not planning on. Yeah. I mean, getting on you know on salsa and juice and all those places. Yeah. yeah. Literally, it was just like to see like what how I compare. Really, mm-hmm. I mean that's truly what the challenge was for me. Um, and I keep telling people like, oh, "Why don't you do MPs?" I'm like, "I mean, why?" So I can I am an I to be pro bodybuilder. Like, no, it's just not. It's not. It's cool. Like you know, to mm-hmm. to 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 say you did as a natural, but then what? Like, what comes after that? Like, that's just a a title. There's a status. Like, no. Yeah. So. Um, and rightfully so again, which again, that, you know, showed me like, yeah, there's why you can't do anything after this because you got that one, that class literally, I mean, it's like, I mean, the cutoff weight was like 220, 220, the cutoff weight was, I think like for my height was like 224. I showed up on a scale, jacket, shoes, everything on, I was like 217. So, and I mean, the guy that won literally sucked down to get to 224. So, I and I'm like, no, you know, cool. While you know, while it's yeah. there, it's a good experience. But after, I mean, outside of that, like, mm, you know, I'll do it again if I if the bug hits. But the goal yeah. will never be to, you know, try to try to get a pro card. Yeah, but probably similar to fighting. I guess that guy that won that probably was like 265, right, or, or yeah. 255, and then just yeah. whoosh, yanked himself down. Whether it be with whatever sauce and clenbutrol and anything else, yeah. right, in that in yeah. the coming weeks. Um, yeah. but I think that, I think that you make a good point about not wanting to go IFBB, uh, because why, right at the end of the day, it's kind of like getting to the league and sitting on the bench. Like if you know that you're not going to do it, then like, why start sacrificing things all over the place to get there when you know, you're not going to get on the sauce. Yeah. No, I mean, sense. it's no, not at all. I mean, it, it, it does. I mean, I know people that chase that title and mm-hmm. I'm almost like, why? Like, what's the point? Like, it's like, it's just almost like, you know, uh, it's a it's a status symbol you're chasing after that truly doesn't mean anything. It's yeah. almost like that blue check that everybody's after. Like, you know, well, maybe not everybody's after. I mean, you get those DMs like, hey, bro, uh, I can get you that blue check. I'm like, I don't need a blue check. Like, what does blue check like does? Give me a status symbol. Like, you know, I'm the authority figure on what exactly. So um, it's almost it's almost you know I think people you know it's a badge of honor like you know almost like down to like some sort of sense of, sense of insecurity right like you know you need that to feel some sort of you know prestige and at the end of the day no I don't need that um, again truly it was just I mean I think uh, even on the natural side if I'm when I'm competing like I've lost shows before that I'm content with just because I know the other guy just showed up better than I was but as long as I'm content with my placement or I better myself. Uh, from the last, you know, uh, uh, outing that I had, uh, I'm content with the placement. I truly, truly am content. You, of course, I'm a competitive guy. I want to win, but I'm very, you know, rational. I mean, I'm very reasonable, uh, and I'm, I can be very, you know, objective by the way I look at it. Like, why am I? I'm not. Yeah, I'm bummed. I lost because I don't want to go through that process. And just, oh, hi, I'm happy to be here. No, <laughs> you know, I want to. But at the same time, when I want to, like, oh, well, fair enough. Like that guy, you know, definitely just look better than I did. And I'm very, very honest with myself instead of being that, you know, uh, delusional. And I think the reason I'm also honest with myself in that sort of experience is um, it's just the way you I look, I look at a lot of things. Um, even though I, quote unquote, might have gotten robbed, but the the my first reaction in anything that falls short is to take ownership, right? Um, take ownership of that. So I mean, uh, not look intrinsically like, oh, yeah, I, you know, ah, you know, I lost. If I could have done X, Y, Z better, right? Not like, man, I lost because he, she, they, you know, uh, did not give me what I, you know, what mm-hmm. I deserve. And I think by doing that, you put power into other people's hands um, instead of your own hand to correct that mistake and make that adjustment. Um, it just makes the process a lot easier. Even though it might, it might have been right. Let's say there's a chance it might have been, or, you know, again, we're talking about like in a very, like, you know, um, subjective, you know, sport. No, it's not a sport, a pageantry. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very subjective, you know, uh, uh, pageantry. And it's like, okay, 
but why am I going to give you that power to be able to like own that situation? Like, no, I'm going to own that because that kind of, that puts the ball at my core to make that correction. And that, that it just, you know, that's my view. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Have you always been like that? Have you always been an extreme ownership, uh, a personal responsibility person? Um, no, I mean, yeah, in a way, um, I maybe I think it's just my personality also. Like, I don't, I don't get wound up on things much. You know, I look at things. I'm very like, okay, I'm a very. This is a situation. Um, can I do X, Y, and Z to control the situation or change the outcome? If I cannot, I'm not worrying about it. If I can, then okay, what can I do to how to make that situation better? And again, it's because I, you know, I'm, I am very. I mean, I've never been, it's, it's just, it, it's almost like a wasted energy. Like, okay, I can, I, I have my moments when I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm like kind of just, you know, in that situation, I'm like, oh, man, I'm trying to figure it out. Right. But then the quicker I realize, okay, literally things that are out of my control, it's just a waste of time for me to keep dwelling on that. Okay. What can I, what could I have done better or can I control this outcome? And, you know, uh, begin, it's all about that power because it allows me to change whatever that needs to change. Uh, uh, it's not a war is me mentality that I'm, you know, I'm saying, no, that it's that person's fault. Like if I own it, I can make that change right away. But if I own it, I'm still, it was like I'm waiting for you to make that change for me. And it just keeps the problem kind of just, you know, lingering a little longer. But to your point, um, I mean, I think it comes with age, really. Um, you know, I don't think it's something I just like stumble to. It's almost like you have that like haha moment, like um, you know, even like this, you can be like the smallest thing in the world, uh, but still find a way to kind of just own that. And the quicker you own it, it's like, oh, it's my fault. Like, yep, all right, yeah, fucked up, you know. And kind of just gosh, the quicker you you get to that place, I think the quicker you can find solution and kind of just keep uh, keep it moving, right? So, got it, yeah. No, I think that that's uh, I think that's a beautiful breakdown. Um, I like what you said about giving your power away, because I, I think we give our power away to all kinds of people, especially you know user one two seven five on Instagram, right? Saying yep. this that or or the other, like why? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, no. It, I, now again, I, I I will be quick to say I'm not perfect by any means. I don't have moments when I'm looking at things like whoa, like. I think I was, I took, I, 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 again, I'm, I I mean, I, I have a bunch of content, a bunch of things I want to say sometimes. I take a screenshot of the idea, but I just never like put it out there. It's just like, okay, me, if I want to put it out, I put it out. If I don't want to put it out, oh, I just forget, I forget. But it's one of those things like I took, took a screenshot of my uh, comments in one of my YouTube videos. And I, I, re- I mean, I don't get like a lot of comments in my YouTube videos anyways, by any means, but if they say videos that's like you know, training well, I might get like you know, 12 comments and they were like great comments. But there's that one comment and that comment, like when that guy was like said, oh yeah, the video is just too choppy and I don't watch. I mean, I, I just can't keep up. And I, in the comment, I mean, I respond to every comment, but like that stood out. And even though all the comments were like, bro, very informative, this is great, man. Just, I mean, you know, positive comments, but that one line sticks out. I'm like, like so to just let people know, yes, I see that. I'm like, ah, you, like, you know, you, you know, John, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Like, you yeah. just have to sit and like, oh, let me, let me investigate more. Did I respond to him? Like, you know, whatever. And I don't respond out of spite, but I, I mean, I my response to this particular situation. Like, I mean, I'm generally curious, like, why was it choppy? Like at least if you think it's choppy, you have some sort of construct constructive criticism behind it that you can actually give some sort of feedback and just not no, I'm just sitting, you know, in, in the basement somewhere just typing it because I want to, you know, make myself heard. So um I could have kept moving and not say anything. Yeah, you know, but sometimes I feel like, eh, you know, since I just I I, t- I take the bait, you know, and I call I tell my friends uh, I call it negative ROI. Like typically nothing really, you know, substantial comes out of those conversations just because it might just you know it's negative it might it might come out on their end because that's what they're looking for some sort of reactions some sort of you know and they and they get that by just engaging but i still engage regardless but i think again but my point is i'm not always you know quick to like you know put it on the side and like you know look at this intrinsically as to fall for the uh you know somebody you know with negative comments and you know off and time and time but I, luckily for me, I don't think I can get that many anyways, at least not to my face or to any of my content. And if, you know, we do have uh, some sort of disagreement, which is okay, and like talking about training or whatever, I put a minute post, you don't agree with what I'm saying. We can have a constructive conversation about that. 
So, yeah. Well, I'm glad to know that you're human. That's amazing. <laughs> Not a you robot. Know, <laughs> you know, uh, something affects you at some point. But uh, I think it's also, I mean, it sounds like you're putting it into context though, right? Because at the end of the day, it, it is just that random user. It is this, you know, one comment out of 12. I mean, we're talking about less than 10%, right? Yep. Less than 10% of the feedback, but we focus. And I do the same thing when someone's like, this reel was trash or, you know, I don't even know what you're saying here. Like a ton of other people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this one random person I've never met in real life. It's like, this sucks, right. dude. I, eat, right. I hate you. No, I mean, I, I, I don't, I mean, I would say I would do a good job of not getting like, you know, caught up in like, and, you know, I would say I, maybe I just, I, I, I don't see it mm -hmm. um, because I've, you know, just have blinders on and I don't see it, um, you know, uh, but, I don't really get that much to begin with. And if I do get it, like, you know, it's typically, okay, it's that I want to take the high road. It's like, you know, let's investigate more. Maybe you just naturally in my, okay, maybe okay, I get it. You make it some, some, some negative comment, but do you ask some sort of, you know, can we get something out of this negative comment? Like it might be, you know, criticism. And I, um, I take it to the, um, um, the podcast called the pivot. Um, I love the podcast, bunch of athletes, uh, you know, Chen in, uh, uh uh, RC and uh, Fred, uh, and Fred, uh, Fred Taylor and uh, Shannon uh, always say something like, you know, uh, when I see John two 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 two, like in my mind, I'm thinking sixty year old, uh, sixty year old dude living in the basement, uh, uh, drinking some soup, <laughs> like <laughs> in his mom's basement. That's all I see. And once I have that picture in my mind, it's hard for me to get pissed at a sixty year old man yeah. sipping on some soup in the basement, just <laughs> typing away, <laughs> you know, typing yeah. away. And sometimes, you know, uh, that's how you got to, you know, you got to look at it because at the end of the day, a lot of people are just saying stuff to get a reaction, you know, really out of you. So, and it's up to you to not fall for that and not let that bother you, even though, you know, sometimes you can, you know, pivot real quick and it's like, oh, no, I'm just going to focus on the positive and, you know, things actually add positive value as opposed to this one thing that's going to ruin something that actually is pretty freaking good. Yeah. No, I, I think that that's like context is important. And I like the way that you, I'm going to have to write that down. 60 year old man eating soup in his mom's basement. His mom must be yep. 90. Goodness. It used, to, it used to be, it used to be some 17 year old kid living in his mom's basement, you know, just typing away, you know, keyboard warrior, like, no, 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 that's easy. Like, you know, 70 year old kids are savvy. You need to age that thing up. Like, you know, and, I mean, a 60 year old proud dude, like living in his mom's basement, like, that's, 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 that's the one. Like, man, fuck that. Like, nope. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, not doing gonna, it. Not even gonna yep. gonna make a uh, a dent nope. in it at all yep. in the slightest. Um, well, I'd love to, I'd love to uh, to kind of pivot here for a second and, and go into. You mentioned being with RP Strength. Is that are you still with yeah. them right now? Yeah, I am. Um, can you can you open? I mean, let me know how you got in. I, I I'm very curious how you got plugged in with RP, and I'm also very curious how you got plugged in with Nick over at VPN because I've I followed think. his story for a heck of a long time. And I think it's mm -hmm. amazing that now multiple people that I know are plugged in over there. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, two of y'all I've worked with. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's to, super, like, it's super, see Adam Blink. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I love Adam, man. Him and the Smith brothers. I don't know if yep. they're affiliated with BPN too, but goodness. Uh, yeah, they are. I think mm -hmm. they still are. Yeah. Yeah. But dude, walk me through, how'd you get in with BPN? How'd you get in with RP Strength? Because there's a lot of heavy hitters over at RP Strength. And there's a lot of heavy hitters over at BPN, man. How'd you get there? Yeah. Uh, so let's start with RP because I think that that's the uh, the shortest story there. So Jared and I used to compete uh, together um, in the same. Uh, I mean, the the year that I won Worlds, I actually competed with Jared. Now I've known Jared like in a, you know in the you know, when Jared was still a natural mm -hmm. before we uh, went uh, before we became enhanced. Um, Again, it's not no news. It's not. There's no Liver King situation here. It, you yeah. know, <laughs> everybody knows he, he publicly uh, tells people. You know, responsibly, of course. Um, so when it was still natural, like you know, we, we competed together. Um, you know, and the which uh, I I think about the story. Like you know, I I the way I approach fitness really, and I tell clients all people a lot of times like I don't have any problem saying I don't know. Right. I mean, I, I think we we'll, we we'll live in a in a place where like everybody wants to be an expert at multiple sub, sub, subject matters, and I'm like, no, I don't know, and that allows me to be in a position where I'm very inquisitive. Like, you know, okay, okay, if I don't know something, it's just an opportunity for me to learn something new, right? 
I didn't know anything about, you know, uh, Jared's like an academic background or like his, ex- you know, his experience or anything like that. I just know him as, oh, Jared, cool dude. Like, you know, you know, we hung out, you know, hell, I mean, we they picked me up from the, uh, from the station ones. We went to Walmart, like we were in the same show together. And it's all asking me like my, you know, picking protocols and like, you know, I'm in training or whatever. And I just like telling them this I like, did not to like run my mouth, but like, oh yeah, they check what I know. We're just conversating. And they not knowing like, you know, that's his, he went to school for that. That's academia. Like it's like, you know, well like versed in that, in that world. And we compete again, we compete together. Um, of course, you already started working on RP in the back end before RP became what RP is. Uh, you know, it was uh, 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 Dr. Mike's uh, student assistant during his graduate program um, at the time. And uh, then RP became what RP is. And so RP normally is a platform where, you know, they hire a bunch of coaches, you know, if you want to CrossFit, if you want to just diet, and they want to create this side of rp that focus on people that just want to get i call the extreme side of fat loss because not everybody wants to be you know three percent body fat and get on stage um and they want to create that and they want you know and you could shot them like hey sam i think you'd be you know a really good co uh you know coach uh because they want to follow your content uh i the, you, you and i have multiple conversations and i'm like and later i knew i didn't, I didn't know it was just like taking notes and like, you know, filling me out, like in like a bunch of conversation over the years. Right. And he asked like, Hey, and obviously because you're a pro bodybuilder and you world champion and just like you've done, you know, you coach clients and you've seen the clients that I've worked with for. And he knows I'm not just not a sugar, you know, and most of, most of all, I think one thing that he said is like, you know, you always like inquisitive to learn. And now I've been picking his brain too along the way, like about things because I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be know it all. No, because I mean, I don't know it all. So I pick his brain about a bunch of stuff. I pick Barricades, people that actually went to school. They have more uh, Chris Barricade, Jeff Nippert, you know, all this guy. I pick their brain on multiple things, uh, you know, could be picking protocols or, you know. Uh, so I, that's why, that's the quest, right? To surround people that know, I don't want to be the smartest guys in the room. No, I want to be, I, I want to, I want to shut up. I want you to, you know, tell me things I don't know. Like, tell me more. You know, um, so I didn't know it was like picking my brain or just like, in a, and he asked me if I want to become one. I'm like, absolutely. Because again, I know who, what the RP, you know, banner platform, you know, science and print, I mean, scientific principles like stands for. And I'm like, I would love to. That's how I got with, you know, um, met with Dr. Mike, um, Nick, hop on a call and, you know, we gel, we all, you know, I mean, we work well together. <laughs> I mean, we're not just work well together when we are, you know, meet up and it's, I mean, we can have a conversation for the for a whole week and and not blink. So, um, which again, I think you want to work with people that you you know not just you know jive with over the uh, over the phone, or you want to work with people that actually get along and truly truly care about in person. And, you know, those are those are my those are my people. So that's with RP, uh, BPN. So BPN, um, a little bit background on like sponsorships with like you know um, supplement company. Uh, since I've been in this space luckily for me i've been sponsored at some point in time um, um i came up if, if there's a company called salvation at a time and salvation um was big at a time i they sponsored a lot of natural natural bodybuilders um that's pretty much like their like deck of athletes like the natural side that's what that's what the pitch i preach and salvation uh sold the company to uh say um uh or but at the time, I mean, at the time uh, so when Cybervision rebranded, uh, they have an extend. They have Cybervision makes extend. Extend is like um, the branching amino acid. They had the brand and long kind of brought like in the BCA, so like forefront of like you know the importance of branching amino acids and things like that. But um, they hired you know, a bunch of athletes. Uh, CrossFit was getting bigger too. Adam Klink was one of the athletes, and from Salvation, they kind of rebranded to uh, became you know just you know they uh, became Extend, and uh, the owner of the company is like, no, I'm just gonna sell the company, and Sayuko bought the company. So Sayuko kind of just came in, cleaned the house, uh, kept you know a handful of athletes, and you know people that kept was Adam Klink and maybe a few others that stayed on uh, for the uh, with the team, and Adam, Adam and I did a few you know, called content posts. And that's how I met Adam through Salvation. Uh, so fast forward and so, I mean, Seiko kind of just changing the C4, kind of just changing like their sort of 
model uh, at the time to be more, you know, just go after major following because they want brand awareness as opposed to like, you know, the typical flagship, you know, sponsored athlete route. And pretty much they're like, oh, okay, they let much people go. I'm like, cool, awesome. I wasn't out again. I've never, I've been with the same company for, I don't know, six, seven years. I've always been with the same company over, I mean, for that a certain period of time. It was a new territory for me. And I was like not actively seeking any uh, any new sponsorship by any means. I've had companies that reached out. And uh, and Adam and I, of course, we get in touch. We uh, were talking and started telling me about, you know, a few companies that reached out. And there were, there's another company that reached out to both of us. And those two were talking. And like, oh, you know, I think, I'm, look, I mean, I love, you know, Nick's content. I met Nick first, not BPN. Uh, Nick's content, and you know we love what the you know what BPN you know stood for, like you know what the brand is, but you know most of the person you know behind the brand, Nick Bear himself, like you know the person. I mean, I mean, if you know if you know anything about you know BPN, you probably say you know you know Nick first before the the brand, um, and you probably buy into the brand because the person that he is. And uh, my wife, uh, my wife, my wife doesn't watch my YouTube videos, but she will like watch YouTube, uh, Nick, Nick Bear's content. That's how, you know, I think she made a point of one, one time I was like, ah, you know, he, he doesn't seem like fake, seem genuine. I'm like, oh, cool. What about, what about uh, I'm, I'm genuine. But anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's, again, that's who, that's who he is. So. In the back end of things, the conversation kind of just started with, hey, you know, I was like, hey, you know, this company is reaching out, this company is reaching out. So there's, I'm not going to mention the company. Um, they reached out in the back end and like, I mean, the idea behind going with BPN is BPN was new, right? They're just getting started. And we kind of see the trajectory of the company and kind of want to grow with the company. Again, for me, for somebody that's listening that I want to get to that space, um, you have to one not only just look at the company as oh how much money can I get or uh, you know you look at the, you look at the product or what they have you know uh, you know are the products what you use uh, are you are you it's going to come natural to you to actually talk to people about the product that you use if you don't use it if it's not naturally just you know integrated into your lifestyle the messaging the value if it's not integrated to your lifestyle. Once it's integrated, it makes the messaging. It's not. It's going to come natural to you to you to talk about that product because it's what you do. You don't force it, and people are not going to see through that. And I think that's one thing. That's one good thing about like all the ambassadors, all the uh, athletes that they have, because it's something that naturally just integrated. And the messaging, the ethos, the good one more mentality. It's what all the all the people kind of buy into. And that's how Adam Clink and I kind of just, you know, I'm so Adam, like, ah, if I, you know, I think the VPN, you know, it's something a company you want to grow with. You see the trajectory is a newer company. Uh, it's a company, I mean, it's not a big company that is just, oh, yeah, this is our, you know, athletes manager. And, you know, how if you did like, no, we want to be involved with the company. And that's how I got involved with uh, VPN. Um, I came on as an ambassador. And again, ego out, ego aside, and people are like, man, I've always been a sponsored athlete. Like, I'm never going to be an ambassador. I'm like, no. I mean, I truly believe in the company. Like, I believe in what the company is doing. So I'm okay with being an ambassador with the company because I just want to be affiliated with BPN. And I, I was an ambassador for, I think, a, you know, a year or two. And then I think the last year or so, that's when I became an athlete of uh, BPN. So, yeah, that's our, you know, that's a long spiel on BPN and, uh, and RP. Right on. What's your um <clears throat> going back to RP for a second? What's your scope of uh, a practice over there? Are you taking one on one group stuff, or is it one to many? What What does that look like on the RP side? No, it's uh, it's it's one on one. It's one on one. So if you hire if you hire a coach, it's that's that's your coach. Um, I have X amount of clients that I can take, and um, that's and I think I talk. I don't. Luckily for me, I'm in a position that I don't have. Not to knock a lot of coaches out there, like, hey, I only have one spot left, like, you know, and, you know, if you want to get that spot, like, the, the, I never, never have to do that, which I'm very grateful for, which still blows my mind because I actually have a backlog and, you know, and I can reach out to if I, you know, need to, like, and, hey, I have some spots, I can just reach out to you if you're still interested and I'll be more, like, more than happy to, to uh, you know, um, pull you up if you, if you are interested because, again, I mean, full time coaching is not this coaching is not my full time gig. I work in corporate America. I work the nine to five job. Coaching uh, the way I describe my my job really is like my nine to five job uh, challenges me. 
uh, coaching people, like, you know, it's, it's a fulfillment aspect behind it because, again, you change people's lives, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like, you know, that's why I'm still the nine to five because I still, I love the challenge. Each day is not the same. I'm walking in, and it's like different fires you put in out, and I like that challenge. And not to say, you know, coaching is not a challenge, it's got its challenges, but I can do coaching with ease. Like, that's something I know, right? Uh, I know my job too, but again, they all, they both present different challenges. But saying that to say, I don't have, I mean, it's not a volume game for me, right? I only take like a handful of clients, which again, it's kind of nice that way uh, to to be able to do that and have that, you know, be in that space that it's not, if I think I'm taking on too much, I'm like, I told them like, hey, nope, I'm done. Like, you know, pause because I don't want to take too much to the point where it's going to, the value of, you know, my coaching service is going to diminish because I'm getting greedy. I'm taking more than, you know, um, I can, I can service. So, uh, but uh, it's a one-on-one base. All my, all the coaching is one-on-one base. Uh, I don't know how we do group coaching. Uh, it's, I, 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 I personally, maybe I'm just looking at it from a, from a, if I want to hire a coach, I definitely don't want to, you know, group coaching, especially when it's got online, you know, co- I mean, how, I'm not going to get to that. So it's a field that I don't understand. They would do it. it you know, There's a lot of people and, that make you know, a lot of money doing it, but you don't seem like a guy that would want to do that. And no, I'll tell you right now, I'll, I don't want to be in, in a one on many online. You're not even, you're not in person. You're not seeing the people like what it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's virtual is already kind of hard to have that, you know, that yeah. connection to begin with. Um, group, I mean, again, if you listen, if you're a group coach, I think I mean, my power to you. It's just, you know, I mean, I, that, you do you do you boo boo, <laughs> and uh, but for me personally, it's just not I'll one on one. If I'm checking in with you, like we are checking. If you talk, and it's just you, like mm-hmm. it's not you know. It's and you know, when I respond to all my clients again, I know there's a lot of coaches out there. They're just a name, the face, um, you know, of the mm-hmm. coaching and the back end, a bunch of other people that are just doing you know the work in the back end. No, my clients hire me to work with me. They are slowly working with me. When you see the video check ins that I'm coming into you. It's, I mean, they know people that work with me know, like, mm-hmm. it's not a bot in the back end that, you know, it's talking to you. It's my face talking to you. So, uh, but no, I, I mean, it's very, you know, uh, I don't think any of the coaches that aren't here do any group coaching at all. Everything is one on one. So if you are a coach, that's your coach. Like, it's not, you're not sitting on a call with a bunch of people. They just, you know, they, you, know, you don't know. No, that's definitely fair. Um, so that makes sense on the RP side. I was I was curious how the back end worked. Um, I assume that because it's a little, I mean, y'all got y'all. There's a you included. There's a, there's a lot of heavy hitters over there, man. Like it's not. Yeah, it's not like I think uh, Rich Fonin is still on, on that platform. I think. I think so. Uh, yep. I think uh-huh. yeah. I think it's a coach. It's a coach again. Different expertise, right? You know, you have you know registered dietitians out there. Uh, you have you know the I main coaches are you know they're you know they're expertise is around like you know uh, hormonal balances and you know i mean you have different that's one thing they are doing excellent job on on like you know hiring a bunch of different people that you know different kind of coaches that you want if you don't know you can always ask the admin and they kind of just steer you in the right you know direction of the right person that might be the right fit for you so i've answered a lot of emails or do a lot of consultations uh for different clients just to figure out you know if they're even like a right fit for like the elite mm-hmm. you know physic coaching program because night ride is the right fit i'll be i mean i'll say that right now and, and which again makes our job a lot easier like a lot of times i really work with people that are first-time competitors um just because the learning curve behind that but you know not every first-time competitors um if you're first time ready, you still can be a good client or a good candidate for but the elite physic coach just because you have some sort of competitive background, you have the mental fortitude to even like, you know, be uh do competitive bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Um, of course the psychological aspect of things too, like, you know, how's your relationship with food, which that's just a normal, you know, conversation uh, with any clients that you work with that wanna embark on some sort of like fat loss process anyways. So no, I mean it's uh no, it's very, it's very it's very and they're very I mean I'll say the corner of the market and know the business model and stick to that and they don't deviate. So, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of, there's so many specialists and I think it's super cool to see every specialist go down their specialty and cross pollinate with other specialists, not themselves yep. trying to do everything. I think that's Absolutely. super cool. Uh, I think a lot of people try to be generalists and like you're saying earlier, they, they don't like to say, I have no idea or I'll have to find that for you. Or I don't yeah. know. They'd rather yeah. say, no, I got it. Uh, I'm all knowing I'm omnipotent. I'm omnipresent. I'm like, I'm a deity myself. Like, hold on. Do you know the amount of pressure that puts on you though, by claiming to know a lot or know everything Way up here? 
Like, yeah. why would anybody want that? Like, no, like, you, I mean, so like, much. what, I mean, I, I'm most curious, like, when do we get to the point where it's almost like, you know, oh, no, 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 no. I, everybody wants to be an expert at, you know, at, at, you know, the subject matter. Like, no, like, I don't, I don't talk about things I don't know about. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I have no room. So, again, again, so I work with Spy University a lot, and people come up to me and ask me, like, you know, physical therapy question. I'm like, listen, and I'm like, no, I am not a physical therapist. I know enough about anatomy. I can share my personal experience with you, some of the injuries I've dealt with, or clients that I've, you know, that I've talked to. But a lot of people ask me like some intricate question about knee surgery, knee recovery. This is I'm like, talk to talk to a PT. And like I'm not a physical therapist. And I'm very quick to tell you that I'm not a physical I know biomechanics, I know movement, I can give you like some, you know, one pointers and things like that. Hey, can you uh, what are your suggestions for uh, you know, like a post op recovery? I'm like like, you should have a PT for that. Like you just finished a surgery. I yeah. hope you went through PT. Like I want to have a client. I mean, literally, I I refer a client out. Like no, like yes, you know, this injury is not really working. No, I think you should see a professional. You know, because I can design the perfect program for you. But if you cannot execute that, like it's just that's not my area of. You know, you need to see somebody that that's their specialty. That's correctiveness. That's what they do. I can yeah. get you jacked if you can train. If you cannot train, you need to go somebody else that can get you enough to get to the place where you can actually execute this program. So I again to the point I am super, super I mean, I hand that thing out super quick. Like, nope, don't know it. Yeah. Like which again, which a lot of time not just like, kind of helps you it stops the conversation right there. Like, nope, I, I don't know it. Like if you want to ask me a question about anything else, training, nutrition, you know, slide selection, this and that. Oh, I can answer that for you like all day. Anything else like, even within that, you might ask some some questions. I'm like, ah, you know what? I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into that, you know. And yeah. again, it's an opportunity for me to learn something new, you know, uh, put a little tool in my toolbox, you know, and you know, I'm like, oh interesting. I never thought about that. Let me look it up. You know, and I tell people like, hey, luckily for me, I work with a lot of smart people. If you ask me a question, I don't know. I am quick to reach out to them like, hey, da 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 Oh, you know, talk to Jared, point me to this literature, this and that, it's my findings, you know, this is it. So, uh, but no, I mean, it's uh, it's an interesting, uh, you know, our place we're in. And, and, and again, I mean, I know everybody wants to be living on social media, but which, you know, it's a badge of honor. It's, uh, you know, everybody wants to be an expert or something. But no, I don't want to be, you know, I, I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's uh, that's fair. Speaking of squat, you though, how'd you get connected with with Dr. Aaron? Like, how'd that even happen, dude? Man, so <laughs> I, I get connected. So I live in St. Louis, and yeah. Dr. Aaron is twenty minutes away from me. Uh, he's one of um, he works at SSM, SSM, the big you know, medical uh, the rehab uh, facility, and his facility is next to like the D one facility, also where they train a bunch of athletes. So, um. And I was going through uh, my knee pain. That's how I actually started running too, because I get twenty because I listened to David Goggins, uh, and I clipped uh, on a uh, recent episode with Joe, Joe Rogan. Like you know, uh, uh, um, I think something along like along the lines of he started, you know, uh, he started some started running because he couldn't squat or train or some point. Anyways, but I in the knee flexion, uh, meaning squatting, uh, squatting. Um, I, it was it was just hurting. I couldn't even. I could be. I mean, if you go back to like some of the videos that we did, like those, that was legit. Like single leg squat, I could not bend that shit. And uh, I'm like, I've done everything in ice, but when I run in extension, it's perfectly fine. Like, nothing is wrong. You know, I can do that all day. And it was just like bugging me. And I love to train legs, and I was not able to train legs for a while. And that was kind of you know uh, depressing a little bit. So, and I'm like, okay, what's the hardest thing that I can do that's not you know legs? Oh, running. Okay. I hate that. Let's mm-hmm. let's do something that we hate. I hate I hate legs. I hate so much. I love it. It's a weird psychological shit uh, that we have to like sort through. I don't know. Um, and anyways, so I'm like, okay, I saw. I mean, I've seen this post. I'm like, I just I'm I'm thinking it does some sort of like virtual like conversation. I'm, lo- I'm looking at like, wait, Brentwood. Like you know, it's like not too far from me at all. I'm like I just you know DM hit them up actually call used to have a, a form. I filled that form out. And it's like, I mean, set up the appointment and then met up with him and he started talking and lo and behold, uh, whip your boy back to shape. Like, you know, literally a matter of like two weeks, obviously because he knows what it's doing, which again, I mean, I, I don't take the relationship that I have with him for granted at all. 
uh, because I have a lot of clients that are hurting. I know PT is just one of those things. It's very, there's so many levels of, you know, I mean, physical therapy out there, sports uh, specific, uh, you know, geriatric specific, you know, a bunch of, you know, experts out there. And I think it's it's quite challenging for people to find a, I'm, I know it's challenging because I have clients that literally that go to a PT, maybe that's not a, you know, a exercise, you know, specialist uh, that doesn't might not know, you know, you know what to do. And, and they understand, but they don't know. I mean, again, expertise are just different, right? And uh, I'm, you know, and when I talk to like, and, dude, I get emails all the time, like, bro, like, how can somebody, you know, get away from it? And I told him, like, do you do any virtual stuff? I'm like, no, I don't. I used to do, but you don't. It's so busy to the point where, like, and I know the reason why I don't take it for granted because I know, like, national teams fly their athletes out just to work with him. Uh, India is, like, the unofficial, official, like, physical therapist or, like, the weightlifting team, like, the India team. Bunch of UK athletes, football athletes who were like, you know, I mean, there was a there was a girl that was waiting last time I was there that drove like four hours just to come see him. Uh, you know, so it to be in that position to be able to work with him and you know and pick his brain on a bunch of things. So I I I don't take that for granted at all. Uh, because I know how hard, you know, it is to come across, you know, somebody that actually knows what they're doing. Um, and knows what he's doing. So uh, that's how, that's how, yeah, that's how I got connected with him. So, and it's, the relationship is very cool. It's very funny. Like anytime, like, you know, and I heard something like, uh, I sent him a text. I'm like, oh, I broke me. It's like, oh, great. <laughs> what did you do this time? <laughs> you know, let's, let's set something up. So, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, no, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. No, that's solid. Uh, since he helped you with your knees, have you had any problems? Have you been corrective exercises yeah. after and, and been good? On, no, I've been good. I've been good. I have like a couple of nagging, like, you know, um, stuff here and there. But again, I literally maybe like three days ago, I can feel that and I did legs and I can feel like, you know, my knee kind of just like acting funny and like, okay, I know why because I have not been consistent with like, you know, the movements I should be doing in the last, literally the last two, three days. I've done at least three different times in a day, stand up, find an elevated position, my touchdown squad. I do like 15, 20 of those, you know, uh, do my lateral, uh, banded uh you know um hip raises um i can always shift just to make sure you know i'm working all that restriction area out and i'm scheduled to run you know five miles in the morning so i mean i mean running again doesn't really hurt it i never tried so but it just felt like okay it's kind of feeling a bit funny so but no i mean um if i do keep doing consistently especially with running i don't have any issues so right on right on and um we did one other thing and i know we're we're about coming up on time here but how the hell do you squat so low? I mean, is it patella tendon lengthening? Is it is it dorsiflexion in your ankles because you're doing KOT stuff and ATG one? Like, how the hell do you squat so deep? <laughs> Legitimately, dude. Huh. Your butt's um, on the ground, dude. Uh, to be honest with you, again, it's working on obviously working on the mobility and yeah. no i mean i don't i don't think i have the phys- the anatomy of somebody that squat that low right because long legs i mean i mean oh i'm so tall i can't squat that low like no like i think a lot of people tend to create like limitations limitations for themselves you look you look for that qualifier to put you in that position like ah yep yeah, that's the reason why i can't do it you're like no like you, you could if you if you work if you work at it and I think again, like some of the again, squat, walking with Squat University too. Like I've always like had a, I mean, a good depth of team for ROM. You know, I was looking for range of motion and every like press even like press even. You see me, I'm literally like folded. But again, you know, to the point where like I put myself in a very compromised because I get hurt or anything like that. But I'm always looking for ways to take the muscle to its full length and short and range of motion because I know that's how you grow lean tissue mass. So the concept is already there. To, well, trying to take that muscle through that length. Uh, so working on limitations and, you know, uh, you know, it's my squat, like, you know, perfect. Like I tell, I mean, again, content I was going to show out there is like, you know, I tell you like my squad is like, and the video that I see on like social media, like on my squad, it's almost like a, like a, like, like a Tinder profile, right? You want to show your good side and not your bad side. If I turn around, you can see like, it's, I still have like a slight hip shift that I consciously, mm-hmm you know, put, you know, make, you know, make emphasis on when I squat, when I'm squatting, I'm like, okay, okay. I'm purposely like driving, like, you know, that left knee because that's, again, if you follow any of the squat university, I have a limited external rotation on one side, on my right side, then the left side. That's what the limited, when you hit that limitation, your body want to find room 
And you can make the argument, maybe you shouldn't go that low. I'm like, yeah, sure, you shouldn't go that low if you want to. But if I can, of course I can. If I can make that correction, that make it, you know, um, get more ROM or get, get in there, I will get in there too. I should get in there. I should strive to get in there. Um, it limits a lot of injuries that you have too over time. So again, it's a mobility that I work on. You know, I know, you know, the number one limitation for most people is just ankle dorsiflexion, right? You know, mm-hmm. if your knee can travel over your toe, that limits you right there. And just like most anything like you do really that has, you know, Look, I mean, that had the, if, you, if you have any sort of knee injury, chances are it's not your knee. I mean, look at your feet, look at your hips. Uh, that will tell tell you the story right there. External rotation, internal rotation of the hips, how much ankle uh, flexion that you have. I mean, I mean, those flexion that you have, that will tell you a lot of issues right there alone. Again, I think that's if you see a lot of content I'm posting a lot to feet. Feet is like a big thing for me right now. Again, running and. You know, I got a couple of posts coming up talking about like, you know, 20 and 20 pound do running. It's not easy on the feet. Like, so a lot of things I've been doing is making sure I'm strengthening my feet, you know, white toe box shoes, um, understanding the importance of your big toe. Like, it's so freaking crucial. It's a game changer for me. Um, even though you just, you're not, a, you don't need to run to understand, like, no, your feet need to, you know, it's a web. That's mm-hmm. your ground. And that's your foundation. A lot of times if you have knee and foot issues, ankle issues, you know, it's, you're stacking the deck, right? If you right, <laughs> right. If your feet is like you know on a stack, definitely your knee will be you know, yeah, kind of stable. If your knee's like kind of caved in a little bit because your feet's not really pronated on one side than the other, hips gonna shift, get a little wonky. If hips get a little wonky. You might have a little bit of shoulder issue because you're not stacked right. So I think again, a lot of oh yeah, my hips. I'm like oh, chances that's probably not your hips. You know, it's probably like you know not your knees. Probably your feet or your hips. You know, you take a look at those and typically will solve a lot of problems. And just understanding that you know, okay, finding a squad position that's favorable for my you know anatomy. That's also you know a great thing. Um, and once I have that, those you know understanding down, it just you know again yes, can I stop at parallel and just like you know, stack the weight up? Yeah, mm-hmm. I can, but squatting to depth is harder than just you know stopping on pallet. You got that bounce record that you can definitely use. Like, no, like I want to hit that stop and get and get back out and get back out there again. I want to make make the movement harder for myself than just saying, oh, okay, that was just easy. I'm gonna stack more weight. Like, how can I move? How can I get more out of this little thing before I get to the point? Like, okay, yes, let's add more. That's always going to be my first goal. And I think I get the, uh, I know we talk about scrap, but just to segue into more of a, I love the, again, a bunch of things I talk about on uh, on my IGs. Typically, it's things that go through my training, the conversation I have people in the gym and having a conversation along the lines of, bro, like, I mean, I I I relish, I look forward to when people like, you know, come to me like, bro, I never see you lift heavy. Of course, heavy is relative, relative. right? You know, yeah. For sure. yeah. So, uh, I never see like mm, I don't. I mean, not to you, but I look heavy. But to me, it is. I'm, I mean, I never see you look heavy, but you like you know you sweat. I'm like, yeah, because I'm working hard. You know, I mean, I'm with that movement. So you don't need to see like you know, uh, you know, a guy you know uh, pressing the hundred pound dumbbell for you to know like, oh my god, like this guy's you know about to get jacked. No, but I would rather see a guy doing sixty pounds and using full range of motion and actually training through his you know at the right RP skill and preferably log in some data, you know, tracking his training, not just got to show him, I'm just going to, no, I mean, I'm just going to press today and I'll show up tomorrow. And I'm just like, oh, okay, what are we doing today? Training. Like, okay, what are we doing? Like, it doesn't track shit. It's just like, oh, yeah. dumbbell press today, bench press tomorrow, um, you know, to a machine press today, like no sort of, you know, preparatory phase at all, any, any movements that you're doing. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that, um, you know, on the, on the squat side, man, I I've got much more respect and maybe this makes me dogmatic, but I've got much more respect for a 200 pound man moving 225 pounds to full range of motion cleanly without any, mm-hmm. without any butt wink or butt coming up before driving out of your heels. than I do yeah. for the same man loading four or five plates and going to 90. Yeah. And it being dirty. And again, I mean, and again, I think, I think again, specificity matters on yeah, anything that you do sure. right and uh if your goal is to pilot you know you probably it's probably more efficient for you to just don't get you know a full rom or, you know because your goal is okay how much can i move this heavyweight you know the fastest way possible 
and the fastest way possible is just like no maybe you know going that extra you know a few inches it's just not beneficial for you, you want to use that recoil a little bit too um you might just be you know it's just not might not, might not be efficient for you i think again the post that i talk about like if your goal is to maximize muscle growth not saying you're not going to grow if you you know scratch the parallel you are but if you're going to maximize it you know that movement it's beneficial for you to just, you know, go take the muscle through its full range of motion. And yes, you polythene know, might not be the best move for you because again, the goals are different. You know, it's the goal of polythene is how efficiently can I move this heavier load as fast as possible compared to, no, actually, I don't want to move load fast. I want to keep this load under tension as long as possible, taking the muscle through its full length and the short range of motion, right? So I think, again, specificity matters. Uh, you know, if that's if you just understand the specificity and understanding the goal of what you're trying to achieve matters and typically can be resolved if you have some sort of structure or some sort of training program that you follow in and, and, you know, and identify what your goal is. So Yeah, no, for sure. And I think that, uh, you know, I lean towards going full range of motion because we're talking about things that are going to carry more over to squat snatches to yep. full squat cleans, right? Me catching something at 90 or above 90 is going to help me a whole lot with power movements, but not yeah. too much with anything that I'm coming out of the full hole on. Um, cause you're and pulling limit, off the ground and, and limit a lot of injuries too, you know, because yeah. actually taking the muscle through places that it's used to going. And once you get to that movement on the load, the reason why most people, I mean, they, the, there's a saying out there, um, you know, most injuries occur uh, due to a poor execution or proper, or, or uh, most injuries occur due to improper, uh, improper execution and poor load management. Um, so if you improperly execute movement over time, eventually you're going to hurt yourself. Uh, load management, obviously just managing fatigue and things like that. And again, that the X, the logic, a lot of people use like, no, it's just quite a you know, past 90. It's not good for your knee. But once you bench press, for instance, the reason why a lot of people see you snap your, your chest outside of a freak accident, it's typically a lot of times when you squat, when you bench in, you probably don't, you know, you, you're moving heavier load that you're, doing, you're not used to moving. And that forces you to go a little bit lower than you're not used to going. And that's when it typically snaps because under that pressure, under that load, it's not used to get to that level. So that's why the argument can be made if you take a load and through its really length of range of motion, it I mean, limits the, your possibility or the, injure, uh, the possibility of uh, a risk of injury. So, I mean, when in doubt, always go for a round. You know, when in doubt, when you question it, it always go if you if you try, strive to go for a ROM. Yeah, I think that's uh that's some good advice. Um, it is interesting though that 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 kind of advice can be given out right for decreasing injury, but then you have someone like Dr. Joel Seedman that says if you if you go past ninety degrees, right, you're uh you're you're practicing devil wizardry there, and. And my only, I do not want to throw him under the bus and make this about him, but I am curious mm -hmm. for the novice, right? For someone that has no understanding, he's got a DR in front of his name, right? You and I don't. Um, mm -hmm. How does someone have discernment in a world where like, dude, people that are watching his stuff that are jumping in and buying his full textbooks and his eBooks and what have you are doing it on the basis of his DR, not understanding the potential positives there, but also the drawbacks and the positives and drawbacks somewhere else. Like how does someone discern that's not in industry? Um, so the answer is not going to be easy. And the reason why it's not, I would say the answer, the answer is easy, but it's not always, you know, black and white. Uh, it's not always black and white because um, at the end of the day, as human beings, it's not in training, just in life in general, we have to have the ability to be able to critically think for ourselves. And I just take something on the face value and just run with it as that's the answer. I'll give you, I'll give you an example, right? Um, I, I just call myself doing doing this, and I'm like, okay, what's my what's the strongest cup of type of coffee? Like the dark roast, the medium roast, the light roast. I'm like, I mean, it sounds like dark roast, right? Dark roast, like, oh yeah, like you know that shit's for strongest. I mean, it's bitter, like it's strong, strongest part. And I'm like, and somebody, I I think I heard somebody it's like, no, actually, light was strongest because you still maintain a lot of the, the caffeination and things like that. And I just took that around with it without questioning it, right? And just struck one day, like, let me ask somebody that knows, like, you know, like, why a, a barista that works at a, a coffee shop, or you know, like, got a question for you. I've always ran with this like concept, but I've never really like thought maybe I should like you know 
inquire about this before just like running my mouth and telling anybody like no dark roast and he confirmed that it's like light roast is like typically the strongest of a cup of coffee the dark roast you know it, you burn it a lot longer so it doesn't hold uh the quality uh, uh the quality of of the uh of the, of the bean itself um so i'm like well nice to know but I've, you know it could have been the wrong information i can just you know again that's how misinformation is spread right like for instance i made a post the other day talking about um, how upright row is not bad for you. Do not blame upright row uh, for your lack of, you know, uh, dexterity or mobility in your shoulder. Like upright row is a great movement. And luckily, I, this is not planned, by the way. Like two days later, I think Dr. Mike actually did a YouTube video talking about, you know, the different ways to do upright row. Like, no, you can go in, you can go out. Not planned. It's, it just mentioned that. And the guy... Um, commented on on video. We again, this this is the cool part. I mean, I'm not throwing the guy on the, on the bus. If you're listening, you want to go check the video out about that. Pretty actually pretty cool guy. And again, this is where like it's not always about like you know no, you can have a you know constructive conversation with somebody without like you know yelling or putting them down. And I'm like you know, and he mentioned something like oh no, like you know any when he said doc, and he said Athlean X. I'm like okay, when you referring like Athlean Athlean X said such and such and such and such, I'm gonna stop you right there, like. So, because it says something, have you done any sort of critical thinking for yourself? And naturally, found out it's like a doctor is in PT school, um, and I'm like, hey, this is a bunch of studies that I've done, like you know, that show there's no, you know, you know, upright row is not, you know, a limitation or is not, you know, very uh, highly injurious uh, compared to any, you know, any of the movement. Uh, the athletes, athlete X said, no, but, you know, you shouldn't enter, you shouldn't have every load, you should have under every load when it's like internally rotated. Like, so tell me I cannot grab something from the floor while internally rotated, grab it up, pick it up, and put it, you know, on top of the fridge. You can make up, you know, break that down from a bio, you know, by metric standpoint, like, no, that's the segment that you do. But again, like, if the shoulder joint is one of the most, most, in terms of shoulder dexterity, has one i mean the range of motion in your shoulder is very vast compared to any other joints in your body so you can do so much so instead of saying a movement again it's a bro science thing that somebody took right and just ran with it without any sort of critical thinking like huh let me do my due diligence and actually look this up and think myself or maybe i should execute like i've been coaching clients for the last 15 20 years i've programmed upright row none of them came back like man i blew my shoulder up because i do upright row there is a lot of people that I've coached in the last 15 years. And not a single one, that ought to count for something, right? So if it's so injurious, I should have at least one. Yeah. I mean, that's like that, that is scientifically, you know, done as it is. Like there's no, I mean, like if you, it's not freak accident, maybe, but you don't have the dexterity, then try to get that shoulder dexterity to make sure you put it in position that you're not hurting yourself. Play with a different, you know, wide grip, coastal grip. It's a great movement for your medial delts. So, squat again, you can make that, you know, uh, oh, squat is bad for your knee. Like, eh, lack of mobility, that's what hurt you. Not you know, because you're squatting so much, that's what hurt your knee. Yes, you know, poor load management, if overuse sometimes can cause some sort of, you know, ailment from time to time. But to your point of like, you know, Dr. Joe Seaman, I think the answer comes down to the lack of people not being able to critically think for themselves. And like, I, I, would, I would go further since we talk about uh, Square University. Again, since I clip that I want to talk about, which I'm going to talk about, if I, when I put that in a story, you see that I'm like, oh, I oh, did talk about this yesterday. And I clip that because the po the video that uh, uh, Dr. Aaron posted today, there was a guy who commented on there saying something about, I oh, watched it, I listened to you, like something about in reference, like it doesn't look jacked or it doesn't look big. And I'm like, and my comment is like, this is why we have liver king. Like the the reason why we have like to the T. If there's any any example out there that we have liver king, uh, this is it. And not to knock, I'm gonna knock the guy because you know again I'm like this is why because you're looking at a guy that looks jacked and he tells you to do something. Oh, it's got to be the authority and doesn't know shit about exercise training physiology. Like doesn't know shit and he's spewing the things that he heard from some other guy from other platform bro science some big dude in the gym like no. Oh, you know, this is why you do it because, you know, this is the way. And like, he has no references at all to that. So to the point is just at the end of the day, we as human beings, and not, not just not just training or exercise or anything like that, we need to come down to a point where we need to take in information, don't take it for face value, do your due diligence, and actually go and actually read and, you know, and be inquisitive. And again, 
Uh, not, I don't know much, but I'm always like, okay, why? And then do my own thinking too. I mean, we can talk about politics and how misinformation is spread because people they just take something for the face value and just kind of just run with it and not say, you know, oh, I'm just because X, Y, and Z, because Jamie, because, you know, because Adam said it, because Nick said it must be true, because you know, so said it must be true. Like, but what do you think though? Like, what do you think for yourself? Like, you know, do you do any kind of logical critical thinking? No. We don't critical think about anything anymore. Everything is fed to us. We just take that and run with it. And I tell people, like, no, don't take my face value. Don't take whatever I, whatever I say for face value. Like, do you read up on, the, on it? If you want to have a conversation about it, we can have a conversation about it. Like, if I tell you no, you know, you should, I would never. And I think, again, to the point, uh, another thing that you should look for, in, so you be, look for before you believe something is absolutes, right? Any absolute statement is usually. That like that's a red flag right there. Like no, I mean other than if you want to lose fat, in a calorie deficit, if you want to lose weight, I mean if you want to gain tissue mass, be the sort of calorie surplus. Other than those basic things, or small things, everything else. If you see any absolute statement, that's a red flag right there. Like you know, I don't know. Yeah. That's your curiosity flag. And any absolute statement, if you want to lose fat, keto this. If you want to lose fat, no, paleo this. Absolute statements are your number one red flags so to dr joe seaman and you see a doctor in front of him again um if you if you do if you do your due diligence and look for a lot of debates a lot of the uh, citations i mean i wouldn't even call it research it's a write-up it's not a research you know it's not, it's an article that somebody writes up that he you know re- reference a lot of times again if people read that they will understand they will know that no this is not a data it's not research done properly it's just write-ups and I will even go further to the point of like creatine, for instance, right? And uh, people use this logic or this line, and yeah, creatine is the number one most studied supplement out there, like most studied supplement out there. And a lot of people tend to take this one um, information, this one study, and just run with like, oh, no, it makes you bold. I'm like, hmm. Huh. And like, you're not talking about the rugby experiment, right? I mean, some of them, some of them don't even know the rugby experiment. It's just something that just hurts somewhere, right? No, and to that, no, the rugby experiment. If I should have read read the study well, so on the you're talking about the DH DHT, the dihydrotestosterone ratio yeah. to testosterone. Um, yep, it's a double blind so, placebo. Yep. So if you pulled if like with that, so the L, the citation a lot of people make with that with that study is like, oh yeah, but the, you know this elevated, uh, you know uh, their uh, their levels were elevated. Like, but if you see. It stated that um, even though if it's elevated, it, it's still within like normal range. Like it's not like something that spikes to the level like oh they were normal range and all of a sudden like you know I mean I like, went up like twenty percent. No, it's still a, I mean they were low, spiked up to an elevated I mean elevated normal range that you somebody that doesn't even take creatine to begin with would have. So that's the number one. That's the number one. Like, I'm like listen, if you genetically pre- predisposition to go bald you're going to go bald, you know, like creatine mm-hmm. is not going to speed that up for you or anything like that. Like you're going to go bald. So don't begin, don't blame creatine where you're going to bald and you're just missing out on a lot of benefits of what, uh, you know, uh, creatine does again, but to do, to uh, wrap all that in, in a nice, nice little boat is uh, the answer really, because again, don't look for the blue check mark because again, that back to the point initially, like you're looking at the blue check or oh, this guy must be the expert at search something matter. Like, no, like, no, like no, not at all. I would say like a lot of people, smart people that, that I know, programmers, like you know, uh, educators that I know, are not the most jack people. No, they are just people that are very versed and they know the science behind this. So, um, compared to your gym bro, that's you know juiced out of his mind and telling you this is how this is how I got Jack without you know omitting the part that is laced up in you know all kinds of things stacked up and all kinds of uh, PEDs. But uh, so the answer is, I think you have to do your do. I think again, there's a la- element of laziness there. Because I've got people that respond like, no, just tell me. Like, no, I can, I'm going to give you where you can find the information a lot of times. So I don't want to give it to you because if I just give you the answer, you're just going to keep coming back and looking at all, that answer. But, but imagine if you actually go to the source and you actually read up, you actually learn a bunch of other things that you didn't ask me to begin with. You get more knowledge that way. So that is one of the reasons why when I hear something, like, huh, interesting. I want to look that up. No, 
I want to read it. It might be a long read, but I want to you know, make sure at least I know some information. It's an accurate information, which gives me more confidence to be able to talk about it when I do want to talk about it. So, and again, I always like say, you know, if I know something, it's science, it's always evolving. You know, I'm willing to admit or to see other, you know, verified sources that might be accurate, kind of that might be able to sway me for what I know. I'm not like dead set in my ways because I understand things, things that used to be accurate, like, you know, five years now, there's been more studies that have done, that's been done that prove they are now maybe not the most effective. They still might work, you know. Uh, so it's never like, yes, critical thinking is important. Don't be close-minded to just like, no, this is the way, get, you know, this is what I found out. I'm just going to sit this and my ways. Be open to be, you know, to be mind to be changed because there might be other things that possibly can change your mind that you might not be aware of, which I think is a part of, you know, gaining or acquiring knowledge to begin with. Yeah, the critical thinking part is something that I think we're missing a lot. Um, and th- this doesn't necessarily as closely tie into the creatine side. It still is a thinking thing. But, you know, the upright rows, to go back to your example of all of the injuries that you've had in your 15 years of coaching with upright rows. Mm-hmm. Um, for upright rows, for me, similar to to back squats, they just expose the mobility that you have. They're not necessarily the thing that's going to be the lever that's pulled that you're injured forever, but it will expose you. If you do not have mobility in your shoulders, upright rows are atrocious. And so are front yep. squats. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Yep. If you if you if you don't have the proper core uh to stand to keep you that torso upright or the right, you know, uh hip uh uh uh, uh, dexterity in your hips to keep you upright row, you always going to want to fold. You always going to be folding that uh, forward, right? So again, I think putting that thing into you, putting that power into your own hand, like, no, what can I do to make this better, right? Yeah. It's sounds like, nope, I can't do it because of that. That would change the game for a lot of people on so many levels. And I think that's, I mean, it's again, I mean, it, it's, I hate to be, I don't want to blame it on social media or this and that, but yeah, there's a lot of information out there. I, I would agree. Like, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes to kind of decipher through it, but I just put it down to like, I want to invest in, you know, if I have $40,000, I want to invest in something. I'm just like, ah, I just don't know. No, I would do my due diligence and do a ton of freaking research if I put my money out there, right? It's the same thing. I'm going to invest my time into doing this. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So I do my due diligence to make sure I do the right study. I, you know, I make sure, okay, my, you know, everything is checked before I invest in that time or, you know, I'm okay with losing a couple of, you know, extra dollars and figuring out as I go, but at least if I'm doing it, I just want to make sure my time and everything is invested in the right place. Right. So, but I mean, again, you know, ownership, man, ownership in everything you do, it's very, very important again, on so many levels across every level. So. Yeah, man. Well, I don't, uh, I know, I know your kids, um, you got you got dad duties probably. You got some other <laughs> stuff going on. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to to do this, especially after the job late night. You have work tomorrow, like dude. I I so much appreciate it more than you even know. Um, and it was wonderful to reconnect with you. It's been a very long time since we've really had a longer conversation. Um, so thank you first of all for for coming, and and then second, thank you for being open and honest and being willing to talk about some things that. You know, if someone caught off 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 the left or off the right in just a sentence or two, might have something to say about it. John two three seven fifteen at, <laughs> at Instagram. You know, um, but dude, I so appreciate you being here. And and if there's anything that you want to leave everyone with, I'd love to open the floor. And then, regardless of that, tell everyone where they can find you so that they can continue to follow your journey and uh, and be able to communicate with your stuff. Um, uh, no, do, I mean, first of all, I mean, foremost, uh, thank you, uh, for, uh, let me, let me hop on when you hit me up. I mean, even though you kind of, you understand, you undersell, uh, the uh, opportunity is like, oh, you know, I just want to jump on, jump on, like, you know, a little podcast. I'm like, okay, don't do that. <laughs> uh, no, th- I mean, anytime you have a conversation with somebody that, you know, that you think their, their, their platform, their mind, uh, is, I mean, their, pa- their platform, um, or the way they go about life is in the right place and just like add a positive value. I, I want to be part of that, right? Because again, that's what I view my platform to be. And I think uh, I have a good responsibility of, you know, um, putting, you know, value out there. And that's what I want everybody to get from my platform. And every time I want to, again, we all know there's a lot of negative shit out there, you know, people that, you know, that doesn't really serve most people in a very positive way. And I think the way to kind of just combat that is by, you know, not focusing on that and just focusing on trying to get, you know, good, solid information that truly can help you become, you know, 
the strongest version of yourself. You're not going to leave anybody with anything like, you know, hey, you are capable of so much more than you think. You know, uh, give yourself, you know, the opportunity to even challenge, give yourself, give yourself the opportunity to be in the space for you to find out that you truly are capable of more than you think. Uh, again, I'm, I'm finding that myself. I'm finding that myself. You know, I'm doing things that I even think about doing. Running has been like, like I said earlier, I hate running. I still hate running. Um, I am dreading running five miles tomorrow morning. I'm dreading 12, running 12 this weekend. But guess what? I want to finish doing it, though. I know the feeling after that. You know, I know what's at the end of that suck. I know the end, at, the end, at the end of that heart and that, you know, doing the things I don't love. So if I, you know, if I leave anybody to, I mean, if I want to leave anybody with any, any sort of in the context, like, you know, challenge yourself, man. I mean, life is, life is short. I mean, I want life to live. Uh, you know, I mean, it will be, you'll be, it will be, it will be damned if you don't, if, if you have this ability to, you know, to move, uh, you know, to, to, just, I'm just okay. To, you know, I'm just, I'm just good here. Like, come on. You know, you can do better than that. So, I mean, yeah, that's something I'll leave uh, everybody with. And uh, a shout out to you also for, I mean, the way we connected. You, I mean, uh, you helped me put uh, this free uh, ebook uh, together, which um, I'll be sharing with you, especially, with, I mean, we're sharing with a lot of people um, that we go into that time of the year, New Year's Resolution, is people trying to figure something out, we look for some sort of structure or plan. I'm going to be giving out free and pass it on to if I want to do that. Um, you know, I mean, have like an email list kind of just going on, trying to, if you want to, you know, uh, if you want to send a link out there, I'll be putting it out there soon. And actually the program that you put together, I'm, you know, putting that free on the uh, the app that I'm launching. Um, this uh, December 12th is going to be the uh, when the app is going to be launching. And again, the app is just trying to give people like, you know, structure, like really, I mean, again, like I said, the difference between exercising and the difference between training. And if you don't know what to do, uh, you look for some structure training. It's the app for you. The app is going to have over 320 different recipes uh, broken down to, you know, if you want to, if you want to like a 10, you know, 10 minute quick, you know, food to put together, um, it get, there's a free version of it that comes with the 20, the 21 day program that you put together. And of course, you know, you, there's all my programs that I created, arms, legs, beginners, intermediate, you know, that you can definitely give some sort of structure, uh, to, um, to, uh, to give you an opportunity to not just take the guesswork pretty much out. So that's going to be going live on December 12th. And if you, you know, follow any of my content, I'm on YouTube. Uh, I post at least one video a week. Uh, you know, all my YouTube content, so I'm sorry, it's not about food. It's not about thousand calorie challenges, you know, <laughs> no knock on that. If that's it, I love watch, you know, uh, so those kinds of time to time, live vicariously through other people. Uh, but no, the content on, on, on YouTube is literally, you know, documenting some of the things I go through running for instance, I'm documenting that, you know, showing you the process of how I go about running. You know, again, it's new for me. I love being the newbie at this things and I want to share that journey with somebody else just, you know, in case you see me doing a marathon, which I'm training for a marathon in February, don't be surprised because you saw the work. You know that went through that. So uh, you know, uh, I think that was the saying. Uh, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm impressed, but I'm not surprised. You know, uh, that's. You know, that's what I want people to be. You know, don't be. Don't be. Don't be. Don't be surprised by any of this. You too can do that. It's something I just decided or choose to do. But the YouTube content is literally just talking about. You know, sharing some of my training philosophies, uh, sharing some of my challenges. Um, most of the other topics, the topic that I, you know, people DM questions to ask on the YouTube channel, because again, the content is not really for me, it's for people and people that are engaging and interacting with that sort of question. And Instagram is just Instagram. Again, it's literally, it's just short form content of what YouTube is. YouTube just allows me to cover, give a little more context uh, behind a lot of things compared to Instagram where, you know, you don't have like a short reel that you can, you know, try to all caption which people don't read much anymore uh, <laughs> because everything is just this way on the screen. Um, yeah. And uh, TikTok, you know, I check on that from time to time, you know, trying to catch the uh, the 17 to 21 uh, from, time, from time to time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to TikTok. TikTok is a good. It's a good. I mean, I I use this stuff for what it for what it is. So yeah, no, I totally hear you. What's your What's your handle on YouTube, Instagram, and and TikTok? Uh yeah, that's important, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube is Sam Okay Fit. Um, Instagram is my name, Sam Okanola. Uh, TikTok, Sam Okanola on um uh, right. on those platforms. Yeah, I went with uh I went with it, uh at no fit or anything like that on the, on the uh, fitness two two two. Uh, but no, um, if, if you look at my name, I'm sure my, you know, Samuel Canola will come up on YouTube, but, you know, but the, the handle is Samuel K. Fit on YouTube, Samuel Canola all across all the uh, platforms. 
Amazing. I love to hear it. We'll also link everything in the show notes here. Uh, dude, greatly appreciate you being out of here. I'm going to pause the recording now. Uh, dude, gotcha. it, was a, it was a heck of a time though. I appreciate you. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. I love, uh, enjoy the conversation.